welcome to Build with me, your host, Simon Atkins. As always, we are live from London. Now, today's guests have made phrases like, what about ye, wise up, and weigh popular outside Ulster thanks to their hit sitcom set during the Troubles in Northern Ireland in the 90s. Please give a warm welcome to Saoirse Monica Jackson, Louisa Harland, and Nicola Coughlin, otherwise known as the Dairy Girls. How are you guys? Thank you so much for joining us on Build. We're delighted to have you guys here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Now, if you guys want to get involved at home, you absolutely can and ask the guys a question. All you need to do is tweet us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Guys, welcome to Build. Mm. So Hi, listen, the, ser the Series 2, the first episode landed last night um, and it was absolutely hilarious. Um, let's just take it back to the beginning. How Did you guys have any idea how big the series was going to be? Was it a complete shock for you guys, Saoirse? I think we've just been in a state of shock now for over a year. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. Just a state of shell shock now for about a year. But I don't think anybody could have expected how well it took off. Or, um, it's, it's, been, it's been mad. <laughs> Um, you're obviously doing loads of kind of like promo for the show now, and series two is out. Um, if episode one is anything to go by, it's going to be an amazing um, series. What can we expect from this series, ladies? Can you tell us much? Yeah, yeah we can. <laughs> um, Come on, then. We go to a wedding. Um, we go to a prom. Bill Clinton comes and visits Derry like he did in 1995. True story. We're going to have to talk about um, that in a Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, An inspirational teacher. We have some Protestants. Obviously, we've seen that. <laughs> and we go see God. Take That. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, let's take a look at a trailer of this series. Jerry Girls! Right, okay, so let's talk about who's actually from Northern Ireland and who's not. I am from so you're So you're there. So you, you're from there. So you have been filming in kind of the areas that you grew up in. Is that really weird? Yeah, it's super weird. Um, stand and filming with Channel 4 and your gran and granda popping up to say hello is, is weird. <laughs> it's definitely weird. And like, do you, so do you see your like mates when you're like walking down the street and, you're, and, and when you're filming? Well, a lot of my friends called to say it and just stood on the sidelines, but we did an amazing, we did an amazing experience in Derry. It was actually like doing a play. There was a couple of times after they called cut, we got a round of applause. And <laughs> being from there yourself, it's just, it's, it's, it does feel like a dream. I know that sounds so sentimental, but obviously it's so surreal. There's no other way of describing that. And of course, you guys aren't from Derry. So where Blowing. are both of you from? <laughs> I'm from Dublin. Galway. And tell us about the accents and about kind of like mastering um, the accent. The I North think it's just as a well to well told story at this stage, but I listened to a lot of Nadine Coyle, <laughs> like her in pop stars. That was my that was my biggest inspiration. She actually she sent me a really nice tweet yesterday. Actually, Nadine did. Did she? Yeah. Did she? Yeah. She said I do her her lost passport speech better than her. I was like, thanks, <laughs> Nadine. So we're we're internet pals now. <laughs> oh God, that's hilarious. And what about you? Do you find it hard to do the Derry accent, or is it kind of like you know? I mean, obviously you're not you're you're an actress, but do you do you find it hard to to kind of like to to get a grasp of it? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I almost had to like um, make up an entirely like new voice as well, so that to help me um, secure it. And I became so obsessed and would be burdening Sersha and Jamie Lee a lot on set. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had to like you know, uh, you know <laughs> like make up a proper you know. <laughs> So. <laughs> so just for those who haven't watched it, can you just tell us a little bit of each about your each of your characters on the show? So Saoirse, you play Erin. So just tell us a little bit about her character. Um, where do you begin? <laughs> where, where do you begin with Erin? Um, she, she's finding her way through life clumsily and she thinks that really everybody is her enemy. Her family and her friends are, are stopping her from getting where she needs to be. She's extremely ambitious for a teenage girl. Um, she's also nervous, awkward, but confident at the same time. She's <laughs> she's a bulb, she's neurotic, she's a she's mental. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about you guys? Each of your characters. I play a very free individual. <laughs> Um, she doesn't censor Sorry, herself. the picture of you, like, pointing a knife That's at someone. That's a sin. That's a <laughs> sin. I've been seeing that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I play a very free individual. Um, 
Yeah. Still staring at I mean, the photo. <laughs> Sorry, like, it's, fr- really it's frightening. Um, yeah, I play a very free individual and um, doesn't censor herself and um, it's really just goes through life very delighted. And I think we, I could certainly do with more of that. <laughs> and of course, you're the friend. So tell us yes. a bit about your, <laughs> yes. about your As character. they all are. <laughs> <laughs> I play Claire, who's the wee lesbian of the gang. I haven't seen that picture yet, actually. I'm sure there's we don't. We don't look thrilled. You don't, you haven't seen um, it. Yeah, so she is, she's Aaron's best friend from when they were very, very little. So I don't know if anyone notices, but Aaron and Claire were a little best friend. Necklaces, you can see Aaron's one there in the picture. Devastated. Devastated, I know. So I mean, for a poor cousin. <laughs> but um, yeah, Claire is, is just constantly stressed and nervous. And she she's someone who I think always tries to do the right thing, but, you know, ends up failing. Like, you know, in series one when she's fasting for, for Kamal and then... You know, ends up eating a dead nun sandwich, as we all have done, I'm sure, <laughs> at some point. But yeah, she, she she tries but fails, and I think, but I think she wouldn't have half as much fun if she definitely wouldn't have half as much fun if the girls weren't in her life because yeah. she would just be too too well behaved. I mean, I think every character on the show is just absolutely hilarious, and we'll talk about some of your cast members in a minute. But um, let's chat about the mural that actually is in. Derry to launch the uh, series. Two. I think we've got a picture of it somewhere. I mean, that is, it must be quite surreal to walk by that and to, it, to see your face on it. It's absolutely massive as well. Like, I didn't understand the scale of it. I don't know about you guys, but like when... Nothing could have prepared us for that. <laughs> but have you, so you've been to see it, have you? Have yeah. you have, yeah. Have your families... Yeah, my brother and sister went to see it and they took pictures that one of them was sticking their finger up my nose and the other one was giving me a mustache. <laughs> so, Yeah. They care in, in their own way. <laughs> and how how are your families coping with your with your newfound fame? Well, Ruth loves it. My mom has Does loves she? it. Yeah, my dad. I think now has got got to the stage where he's like, it's, it's dairy girls, dairy girls, dairy girls, especially and dairy. But people are now coming up to my mom and being like, "Are you Aaron's mom?" She's like, "Yes, yes, I am." <laughs> I mean, it must be hard for her to go down the supermarket without getting stopped by by people constantly. Um, how are you guys dealing with the newfound fame? Do you find it like overwhelming that people like know your faces when you walk down it's, the street? It's quite weird. Like Louise and I went to New York for my birthday, and people recognize us there a lot. Like a lot. The show had been out two weeks. So we were like, oh, no one's going to have watched it here. And uh, you don't know with Netflix how many people are watching the show. But yeah, people were sending us shots and bars and stuff. And that, I think that was a bit of a moment that I went, oh, hang it's on. It's hard to be- believe, really. I think we're all d- overwhelmed by it. And Shocked. So it's, w- it's the highest rated show in Northern Ireland ever. And it's also gotten 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is crazy. I mean, like, I don't know any film that gets 100%. Why do you think it's... So, why do you think it's so appealing? I think there's so many elements to to the success of this show, but we we've we've said this from the very start. It really comes down to Lisa's writing. Lisa's writing is amazing. It's truthful. It's authentic, and obviously, it's hilarious. And each one of these characters are so well rounded, and not just within the five of us, but all the families, any of our guest stars. Um, and it's the timing of it as well. The timing, the fact also that it's written by a female. It's yeah. female led. Um, there, it's. I think the stars were aligned, but it really comes down to the writing. And I think the the kind of juxtaposition of like the comedy um, against the the conflict in Northern Ireland is is absolutely brilliant. And was that based on uh, Lisa's own um, experiences when she was a teenager growing up? Loosely, she'll probably want us to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she said initially she didn't want to write about the troubles at all. She thought about setting this show in modern times. But then Liz Lewin, who's our exact producer, said, like, why don't you just try and write it about your own experience? And, you know, that's actually quite interesting because she'd say to Liz, like, oh, you know, when, you know, they'd stop the bus and a soldier with a gun would get on and Liz would go, no, I don't know about that. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. So I think the fact, it's a real testament to Channel 4 and Fiona McDermott who commissioned this show that they didn't get Lisa to compromise her voice. And I think people have really responded to that. And also, it's great. Like, people don't give audiences enough credit for, you know, being curious and wanting to learn. When we were in New York, people were saying to me, and what does weigh-in mean? And what does this? People people are interested. And we've seen the same old thing a million times, but this this felt new. Well, reading the script, I felt new anyways. It does. Fe- it feels really new. It feels really fresh. It feels really brave for Channel 4 to commission something like this. Um, and it's, it's, it's really kind of paid off. And you guys... 
look like you're having so much fun mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> what is the crack like on set with like all of you? Like, is it is it like the, the crack, crack is ninety? The crack <laughs> is fierce. Crack is ninety, which no one in this room is going to understand. Fierce. I think crack, 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 crack. crack. <laughs> great crack the whole time. It's you got to stop for crack, 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 crack. crack. So <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here's the crack. <laughs> Who's the biggest joker out of the cast on on set? Mm. Ooh. I mean, obviously, you, you work with, like Tommy Ternan, who's like a a a, a, a great Ta comedian. Tommy Tommy's the worst for for laughing on set. Oh, the w the worst by a million miles. Yeah, and he he's not here, so you can just sell him down the river. It's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Tommy>. <laughs> the camera guy like is is like shaking. Yeah. If Tommy goes, everybody uh, goes. Yeah. Um, and of course, Ard Lohanlin is joining the cast. You know what? When I watched it last night, I thought the priest. Was Ardell O'Hanlon? Do you not think they look alike? How drunk were you? <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, because when I read, I go, Ardell's joining. I, I, I actually thought that was Ardell, but he lost a bit of weight. Peter Campion. That's Peter Campion. I know. So <laughs> no, Ardell's but, not playing a priest. He's playing a, a mummy's boy, a real Irish archetype that we all certainly know yeah. and have come across. And have you, have you met him before? Are you excited to, to work with him? You can take this song. <laughs> we were so excited. We were so excited to work with them. It's yeah. it's, it's a think a dream it's come true crossover. doing a comedy in an Irish comedy and um, yeah everybody was gathered around the monitors the days that he were in. We everyone was so excited. Like people from different departments were like, "What are you doing here?" But like everyone was like watching. <laughs> um, he's a, he's such a nice guy and it's we, we an were honor. told specifically by Lisa, "Don't bully Ardle because the scene that we're in with him gets quite physical." <laughs> so she was like, "Don't bully him." We we're like, "We're not going to national bully him. treasure." <laughs> he's a national treasure. Don't well, I mean, him. you guys are now national treasures. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> no, but, you, but you are though. So what's this? Um, uh, listen, you you made it on the Late Late Show in Ireland. That's pretty. That's yeah. pretty no, that is we are. the that biggest chat show. In, in Ireland, they were on it. So what's <laughs> go on? Thank go on. you. Give her yeah. No, this is a big deal. Dylan did not know what was going on. We kept going, Dylan, this is a big deal. He was like, <laughs> he didn't get our nerves. To him, this is probably that. another chat show. So let's just talk about Dylan for a second, because obviously, <laughs> let's, let's. he's oh. like the token boy amongst all of uh, all of the girls. Um, how did he get cast, and what is it like for him on set with all you guys? He has the best time ever. I think we just want to... It's absolutely wonderful for me. He's never had a bad time in his life. <laughs> <laughs> He's living his best. Life. But no, he was the last the last one of us to get cast. We'd, the four girls, we'd been cast before him, so we didn't know who our James was going to be. We did the first script read without Dylan, actually, and it was Lisa's husband, uh, Tobias Beer, who's an actor, read in for James. He's English. He's English, yeah. so it was, it was really funny. Um, but then, yeah, then when Dylan fit in, it was like everything came together. He's like the glue that I think holds us together. And yeah, they spent a long time looking for James and you couldn't find anyone more perfect than Dylan. Yeah, I was actually you just saying that today. As soon as he started speaking on that read through, it was like, this is really exactly what you need. Yeah. So what's this Bill Clinton thing all about? Just tell us that story, this, the, the Bill Clinton rumor. Well, these two are very badly behaved. Bill Clinton loves sausage rolls. <laughs> 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 that's basically, that's, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to that's know. All you need to know. <laughs> They, they told a bunch of journalists who were doing quite a lot of press junkets <laughs> and they told a bunch of journalists that Bill Clinton was in the show and Hillary, right? No, no, because he was like, and is it actually the real Bill Clinton? And we were like, yeah, yeah. it so is. He loves his other and I was like, yeah, we had to consult Hillary for a few days. And it was, you know, and uh, they believed it. They believed it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so series two, no doubt, is going to be an absolute smash judging on the, the ratings from last night. Is there a series three on the cards? And what about even like a movie? Would we like to see a movie? We'd love to see a movie, wouldn't we? But let's talk about series three. I mean, is there a series three? Do you, do you get told ring, these things? Will we ring Ian Katz right now and be like, Ian, what's the crack? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give us another series. We don't know yet, <laughs> but we'd like to, for sure. Um, and if a movie offer is on the table, would you take it? 100%. 100%. So season three was on the table, we'd take it. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a cup of tea on the table, you'd probably take it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dairy Girls teeth whitening products, whatever you want us to do, fake tan. We'll take the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, it's International Women's Day on Friday. Do you think that there's still a long way to go in the TV industry um, with kind of um, with, with female roles? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Or do you think we're progressing quite a lot? There's progress, and I think there's an obvious hunger for it. The, the fact that this show did well is not a coincidence. People were obviously waiting for a show like this to, to come on. But then I think you see people like Michaela Cole, who did that amazing talk in Edinburgh, and you see how underrepresented like women of colour are 
on TV as well, that's a huge stumbling block that we really need to over... And it has to be addressed consciously. It can't be like, oh, these things just happen to... Finn. Like Dairy Girls having four female leads, that's not an accident that happened. That was a conscious choice. And yeah, these things have to be dealt with. But yeah, we're, we're definitely not there yet. And Dairy Girls is, is a great representation of this, though, for sure. Um, before we go, I want you to tell um, your channel, for your story to me that you told me in the green room about... Um, <laughs> <laughs> when um, uh, when you were working in the pub and um, just t tell me the story. I after finishing filming season one, I when she's like, so season one finished, she's obviously like really well known at this stage. I went back to working in a pub because got to pay the rent. London is expensive, <laughs> and um, uh, Channel Four had their Christmas party in the pub that I worked in. <laughs> And didn't think I'd know anybody, and yeah, and and they actually, the more drunk they got, they were like, I can't watch, and I was like, Oh my god, I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, these things happen. <laughs> things happen. Um, and Sirsha, I was um, going through your Instagram, and I came across this really funny comparison on your Instagram. I think we've got a, a picture of it. Dairy Girls is like Gossip Girl. If Blair Witch, if if Blair Waldorf was Irish, broke, and drank a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much thank for joining us. So thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. All the thank success you. in the world with the next series. If you haven't already, you absolutely must catch Dairy Girls on Tuesdays at 9.15 on Channel 4. We'll be back tomorrow with a live session from Newton Faulkner, so do join us then. Right now, though, give it up for Are We Dairy Girls? Oh, thank you. 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 Don't know why I'm putting on an accent. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>